and they uh, again welcome to uh, this lecture uh, in the last lecture we talked about the a uh, hierarchy of transformation of the projective transformation we consider the projection transformation as a group like algebraic group and then within this algebraic group we look into three subgroups which is going from like one, one, uh, everyone is less constrained within the projection group. So we started with the projective transformation, and inside that we saw the affine transformation, and then we saw the, which one? We have, if we started with this transformation, we say within this, their structure. So we have the group of the big group, which is include the projective transformation. Now the projective transformation is the only thing which is the, it's invariant is the, a, uh, the, a, uh, the cross ratio property. Other than this, it doesn't maintain anything or it's not invariant under that. And within that, we saw several levels of hierarchy. So the, the first one from inside, which is, we saw, which is pretty much kind of maintain symmetry. It maintain angles, maintain length, and maintain parallel lines, which is, we call it the isometric. So the isometric transformation is the, the, the top level. Now, after that, we look at the, which one? The one which is we were able to, to change the angle, which is mean we will still have a rotation, but the rotation was two angles inside. So we get actually the same thing, scale, which is, was not in the same, not isometric. The, the second one, we get only scale, which is along the x and the y, the same scale, which is, that one we call it the, no, the affine is, is the level B above. Let us go back just kind of to, how oh, I get the back from this. Just to refresh why this is stuck. Escape supposed to get me out of this, yes? I want to get to that. Figure in this hierarchy. In the last lecture, we mentioned this, this hierarchy within the, the group, and this is most of the time we spend in actually looking at the oriented Euclidean group, and this is what we call the isometric. And then above that, we look at the Euclidean group, and then above that, we look at the affine, the, uh, a fine group, and then that was the, the projection. We practically, we call them the isometric, the similarity, where we allow actually a scale along the x and the y, the same, the, the, the same value. And then we have the uh, fine transformation. We have a uh, scale like along the x and y, which are different. And we have two angles for the, the rotation. And then we have above that the projection transformation. And now this is the, the things which is, was now important for us to, in order to continue this lecture. Now, one of the things which is we realized that we could actually get this one projective matrix decomposition into 
again three matrices which is multiplied by one by the other and if we get these matrix matrices kind of like recovered backward we could actually recover some properties little by little and this is one of the things which is in this lecture we'll try to see what things we need we can recover from giving not all the information to recover the projective transformation we know that we need eight variables because it's eight degrees of freedom it's a matrix three by three now if we not always it's possible to get all this information but sometimes it's possible to get much less information than this how what can we do with this this information so let us start it with we know like the the fact that one thing which is if i have a transformation here of this square and this is in the plane pi 1 and it's projected in plane pi 2 and this is will be projective transformation because the lines are not parallel and if i can manage to get a transformation that will take from this pi 1 to a uh, pi 2 to pi 3 which is in this case what i realize line are parallel par and, and are parallel and this is one thing which is clear from this transformation. So if I get from here to here, it's equivalent to if I get from here to here. This one, we know what's this one. This one maintains parallel lines, at least it's clear. So the one which is we know it's maintain parallel lines, the affine transformation. So this is a fine transformation, which is mean if we, we can recover the affine transformation, if we apply the transformation h, h, uh, h prime p. Is that clear? I, um, I will go later into detail to see how we can do this. Now, this is one of the, the issue, which is the first one. How, what, what we need and how we can recover the affine transformation. Because if we recover that, we can know which lines are parallel. And we can also recover other information, which is we'll see. So let us start it with this very simple things. If it's known that I have the, the line A at infinity, if I have the line at infinity, I can recover the affine transformation. So if I have two points, if I have a line at infinity, I know I'd have two points. And from these two points, I can recover the, the, uh, the cross ratio. And now let us kind of like make it simple. If I have line at the infinity, I want to transfer this line at infinity to a canonical point. Now we know that line at infinity, in order to transfer it to a, a canonical point, which is a faint transformation, this line remain in the infinity. Yes, for projective transformation, this lines become to a finite point. So this is one thing which is we would like to utilize this property. We are not now taking this line infinity, not return it to any other like finite point. We want it to be back to a canonical point, which is, which is definitely possible because we can take this to different point, we can actually normalize and, and like we make sure the projective transformation will take this line to canonical uh, point. So let us kind of like assume we have L1, this is, should be transpose. We have line L1, L3, L2, and then L3, which is a line in the infinity, uh, in, 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 in a finite line. This finite line, we make sure that I3 is not zero because i3 is zero only for line in the in infinity and now what we want to do we want to what transformation that will take this line fine line into this line yes so we want to project l into this this one and this is will be the transformation that will do it just you can just do the calculation and check now I will take about like HA which is the projective transformation so HA is the projective transformation so pretty much we can apply 
this transformation, then projective transformation will make sure that the line, this line will go from infinity to canonical place and it, we can apply it to the entire image to get the, the, uh, the transformation of the entire image. So let us go back to the same one. So what we have here, HA, which is we have here, it's the affine transformation. This is what we want to see. Why it's affine? Because it's preserved parallel, parallel lines and it's preserved ratio. Now, it's, if I get to this transformation, which is that will take PA, the only thing which is take the line here, the HA we have, this the transformation that will take only a line, you remember, it will take line from any line to a canonical position. Any line to canonical position. So this is a projective matrix, not any projective. We'll see that this is fine because it's satisfy these two requirements. So if I this, this make these two multiplication, I guarantee that the line at infinity will go to the canonical line. Now, this is just theoretical. Let us try to see what we can do with these, these things. So because before we started, let's look at what's vanishing points. Because the vanishing point will give us information about the, the image. So a vanishing point, we saw it like taking photos, a street, railways, all these things. We see lines which is are in the real world, in the real world are parallel. They appear not parallel in the image in the, because of the perspective distortion. And they intersect at the point in the infinity. The intersection of the image of parallel line in the image space this is what we call the vanishing point. Now, let us try to think about it again. In the projective transformation, we take two parallel lines and that they intersect parallel line. We know if we take parallel line and apply projective transformation, what this is, where they will intersect. If we take parallel line and project them, apply projective transformation. They will intersect in the infinity. So if they inter project like this intersect in the infinity, this means that the vanishing point from the projective in the projective space where they exist, they are actually not fine points. The points in the infinity. Just because they cross product because line we know that the the parallel lines in the in the uh, a, uh, in the real space we can actually the in, their intersection could be computed by cross product of these two lines cross product of these two parallel lines will give us a point in the infinity and this is why this vanishing point is point in infinity Is that this point is clear? Now, this is one thing which is we are going to use. Vanishing point in the projective space, there are points in the infinity or infinity. Now, let us look at what we have here. Now, let us assume we have this image, which is general kind of like. We know that this is the product of applying a projective transformation to some image. Because we see why this is projective and not affine or not isometric. Why? Because here we see that the, first of all, the same, the, uh, the s length are not preserved and the parallel lines are not preserved. And why? Because we see that this rectangle is large, uh, larger than this rectangle if and they are in the same size. Now, if we take, we know that in the real world, these two lines are parallel, which is I draw them like kind of passing between the tiles. If I take these lines, I see that they intersect in two points, U and V. So if I take L and M, they will intersect in a point U. Now, since they are parallel in the 
original source world space, they will intersect in infinity in the projective space. Is that clear? The same thing I can do with the point V. Now, two points in infinity, I can draw a line between them. We know that two points, we can always draw a line between them. The same on the Euclidean and in the projective space. The line which is connected to these two points also exists in the, in the infinity. It's not in the finite space, it's an infinite space. Now, if we now like know these two points, these two facts, here is the, we can easily compute the, this line by easy, first of all, it's easy to compute u plus L cross M, the same thing with V, and it's easy to compute L infinity for this, which is u cross v. Now, one thing which is, if we apply the projective transformation back, only the projective transformation, we will be able to, this is, will be the source image, and this is, will be after affine rectification. Now, this is the affine rectification this is will actually what we will have. The only thing, this is, this is the original image after a faint transformation, which is mean we detached the projective part from the transformation and manage only to get as if we apply only a faint transformation to the source image. Again, I repeat this. This is the source image which is we take. After projective transformation, we get this image. Now, if I have the knowledge that these lines are parallel, which is here that connect these between these tiles, if these are lines are parallel, I can recover this part. Without, not that, the only thing which is we don't, we, the only thing here we have, we have only parallel lines. We know parallel lines in the original image, and we know the correspondence line in the, in the transformed image. We don't have the entire eight degrees of freedom. So if I have only this two, this information, I can recover the image which is the, the affine rectific, uh, rectified image, which is I detach or actually remove the perspective distortion. And this is exactly as we, I take this image and apply affine transformation, we get this image. This is clear? So why this is affine? Because this rectangle and this rectangles are the same size. And these lines are parallel here and parallel here and they are parallel in the original image. The only thing which is different is that this is, instead of this square, it's get kind of squeezed to some size. And this is complete circle, it's here an ellipse, which is pretty fine what we expect to get from affine transformation. Is that clear? Okay. Now, how we can compute, it's e now, now we know how to compute these things. If we can now apply the, the transformation, we can pretty much do, do this kind of like a uh, computation. Is that clear? Now, let us go, what if we have, we don't have the, the, the parallel lines, but someone from the projective transformation give us the aspect ratio. Someone give us the aspect ratio. If I have the aspect ratio on, on like, which is mean, I have three point, which is collinear in the, source image, and I have the same three points on the projective space, which is their correspondence. This is, if I have this information, 
I say it's enough to recover the projective part, or like what in, in kind of like simple language will be, will be able to recover the perspective distortion. If we're able to recover the perspective distortion, we will get the image as if it's where, if we are, as if we applied the affine transformation to the original image, or to the, the original word, whatever. Is that clear? Now, if I have three points, let us say A, B, and C, in the, in the, uh, in the word space, there is an L missing there, and I have A prime, A P prime, and C prime, their correspondence like points. Now, if I have these points, I can, this is mean that distance between A and B divided by the distance between A and C is known. Because what we know, this is the, the, the I know the points and the, the, you know the correspondence. And this is maintained. This is will be, this is invariant. This is will be the same in the image after transformation. Now, it's easy now to write that the, uh, instead of points A, B, and C, I can write them 0 and 1, and 0 and A, and 0 and A plus B. Is that clear? If I have three points, which is A, B, and C, along the line, N not so. This A is not the same as the bold A. Just s they are not the same variable. So I always I know the ratio between them. I always can normalize them that this is will be like the point transferred to zero. This is will be the ratio A, and this is will be the ratio A plus B. Now, if I manage to get these three points in a line, the same way. I can get these three points on the correspondence, like, like in their corresponding points in the image space, on the projective space, which is will be A, 0, 1, transpose, 0, A prime, transpose, and 0, A prime plus B. I have now three points and their correspondence three points, corresponding three points. Now, it's, I can compute the two by two projective matrix. I have three points and their correspondence, three values, and that's mean, which is I can compute a matrix which is two by two because it has only three degrees of freedom. I, I, I know that the points are collinear. The points are collinear, and I know the aspect ratio, and I know correspondence between them. Now, if I compute this, this is what we will do. The image of the point 0 and 1 under H2 will be the vanishing point. Because the image of this point will be kind of a like the point in the infinity, and this is will be a vanishing point. Now, I assume computing this this part is is easier. I did not go into detail because I can, if I have the the lines, I can easily compute the uh, the transfer the, the projective part of the transformation just kind of like going over this transformation, which is we have d just done here. This is pretty much so it's the same. We have what I know, I know these lines, I know A and AP, and I can recover these two matrices, just simple algebra. So I have two lines, in this case, I have the line at the infinity, and the line at the infinity will enable me actually to compute the, 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 uh, the only the projective part. So, and this is what will enable, if I have the line at the infinity here, Lm, L infinity, I can actually 
walk back and create the matrix A, which is will be able to actually do only the, the, the part, only th this part, which is mean to actually take the, the, Im the, the, projective, the projective image and actually rectify it back to a fine transformation, which is mean removing the projective part of the transformation. Is that clear? So these two are not really the, this the same. Here is a little bit kind of so we work out the, the math a little bit. So but pretty much it's not really complicated. It's sometimes things when you look at them like just kind of like trying to follow, it look like kind of hard, but when you just kind of like have a paper and a pencil and work them out, you will realize that they are really very simple algebra. Just kind of multiplication of matrices and kind of like a, uh, a solving a kind of, in this case, it will be kind of like three equation of three variables. So as it's not really complicated. If it's, it looked like, but it's not. Anyone have question or like a, is that clear? So if we have the, if we have the, uh, aspect ratio we could also if we have the, uh, the if we have the vanishing points we can compute the line infinity if we have line infinity we can recover the projective if we have the also the vanishing point we can also recover length not not length we can recover length ratios because since we being able to get to the point to the image which is was the a fine transformation level, then we can, we know that a fine transformations preserve length ratio. It preserve parallel and preserve length ratio. So we know if we have that image, we can compute the, the length ratio. Is that clear? And this image, the length ratio is preserved. So if I come back and come back to this image, I can't uh, recover the length ratio. Questions? Okay. So let us get to another level. Now we, we manage to go from the projective transformation, get the projective back, and we were able actually to get to the image after applying the affine transformation. Now, can we get a little bit kind of more into kind of more into the metric transformation? The one level below the affine transformation. Now, one thing which is we need to understand, like in order to get this, we, we need to look into circular points. Now, circular points, which is if we take a circle and intersect the line and the infinity, the intersection point is, this is what we call circular point. It's actually the intersection of circular or conics with the line in the infinity. So these are the circular points. Now, the circular points, which we sometimes call them the absolute points, these are also the points which is are live in the complex domain. They are not real domain, they are in the complex domain. So in this case, if we have, if we kind of like try to get more information, if I get circular points, then I can recover up to the level of similarity transformation. And that's, we see, in a similarity transformation, we note that circular points, <coughs> ij, will be transformed to, again, to points at the infinity. So if we take any two points, i and j, which is, note that i and j are conjugate points, and they are in the, in the, in the uh, in the complex space, and they are canonical. They are canonical because what we will get, we know that there is one and i, 
and zero. The zero gives us that in the infinite, infinite, not the infinite, the, uh, or in the infinite of the projective space, the same thing with J. Now, if we take this transformation, which is what this transformation is, This is rotation and, and translation and, and not only scale, uniform scale. Because the scale along the x-axis and the y-axis are the same. This is the similarity matrix, or the similarity transformation. If we apply the similarity, HS, similarity transformation into t this point, what we will get which is pretty much we apply this, we will get the kind of like if we have the line or like I prime and we apply this as we'll get the, the point. Which is mean what we will get, circular points are fixed under projective transformation if and only if it is similarity. And this is the, the, the very important observation. If we, this is the, this, this observation is very important. If we have a circular point, which is, we, if we have a transformation, which is we apply to a circular point and we get fixed points, which is in the, in the fine space, what we will get, in this case, we will say that this is a similarity because this has happened only in a similarity transformation. Now, Let's just look at the case where we will have a circle. Circle is a conic, or like any intersection with the line at the infinity will be circular points. So in this case, we'll get these two circular points, which is, will be circular points, this one, which is one of these circular points, is I0102, because they are, if you realize this is the first point we'll have. This is the I we get. Remember, we have two circular points, I and J, which is they are in complex domain. So what we will get, this is the, the, the point. And now, if we can recover from this, the dual conic is very easy to compute. The dual conic of this, this conic in this case is a sphere. The dual conic will be the I which is we saw, multiplied by G transpose pr plus G multiplied by I transpose. And this is will give us a unity trans uh, uh, the, the, uh, the matrix, the unit matrix in this case. Okay. <laughs> okay. And so if we we can write this as the, the conic in the infinity will be the H, the similarity transformation, multiplied by the, the conic and multiplied the similarity transpose in the other. So if I have the conic, I can get the, actually the, transfor the transformation of this conic, the dual, the dual, uh, the dual conic. This, this property, which is if we multiply by the transform uh, the 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 uh, the, sim the uh, similarity transformation we will get the same one is that clear so now which is mean if we have two circular points we can get back to up to similarity, which is mean if I have this transformation, which is I apply in this image and get this projective space, I can get somewhere here in the middle by applying this back 
this transformation, which is I can compute, let us call it H tan, which is this will give me exactly similar as I apply H S to this image. I'm not getting back to this image yet, but actually I'm being able to go back to up to similarity. In the first part, we get back up to a faint transformation. So let me just kind of like try to get this, this point clear. We have the source image. Now, we know that there was a projective transformation that was applied to this image, and we get this image in the projective space. Now, along here, we have different levels. Because in the last lecture, we said we have the last closest one will be here, a thin transformation. And here we have the, symmet the symmetry. And let's make this a little bit smaller. And here we have the isometric. Now, what we saw in the beginning of the lecture, this, this is known. This is the, the source image is known. And this is, let us call it source. And just for similarity, let us call this A. And this is called this B. These two images are known. We learned from the, the last lecture, if we get eight correspondence point, eight degrees of freedom, we can recover, go back from the projective space to the source image. Now, in the beginning of the lecture, we know that if you give me the line in the infinity, we can go back to the affine transformation, which is mean as if you apply the affine transformation to this. So if we apply this here, we'll get the isometric. If we apply the similarity, we'll get to this image. And we apply the affine transformation, we'll get to this image. So let us call this A1, A2, and A3. Oh, sorry. I want to get B1. B2 and B3. Now, if I get the line in the infinity, I can recover transformation, which is, we, we call it H8. If I multiply this transformation or the, the, by the projective result, I can get back to the affine transformation, which is mean if I get A multiplied by this, matrix, let us call it B3, let us call it M3, M3. If I multiply it by M3 and then multiply by the transformation, which is, let us call it HA, I get to the projective space. Which is mean, in order to get here, I, I need only HA the inverse of H in. This is what we computed. We computed actually H A and the same thing, the inverse of H A, because these are simple. If you give me two circular points, the same thing here we saw that we, if you give me the, the same thing to like the, uh, the aspect ratio and then image, we can also recover the, the affine transformation. You so like even the detail. Now, if you go give me this matrix, which is I, we call it in this case H S. And the same thing here will be H S minus one. Uh, let us call this H S minus one. And this is called. Okay. 
Now, if I apply this matrix M3, so M2, I will get B2. If I apply HS to B2, I'll get the projective. And the projectively transformed image. Now I can get from the projective trans the the projective uh, the projected image or the projective transformed image back into B two by applying HS. HS I can compute if I have two circular points. Two circular points. If I know there is a, cir a circle, and I know the intersection of the these two circles with the line in infinity, this is will give me two circular points. Two circular points at enough to compute HS, which is I can go back up to similarity. Is that clear? Okay. Now If I have the similarity, which is mean I can, what I can in like compute with similarity, we know how to compute the angles, yes? Now it's the angle, we know how we compute in the Euclidean space, the angle between two lines. Dot product of their normalized vectors. So pretty much here how we can compute the cosinus of the angle between two lines L and M. And a now in the projective space, if we take this term and try to move it to the projective space, the first, the second part, maybe like the, 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 the some of the part, it's a little bit complicated because it's not easy to kind of like move this term into cross product. This is one of the things which is if we easy actually to do it in the, if we can apply the uh, like ephemeral transform and operation into cross products, it's easy to move from the Euclidean into the projective space. But we can't. And the, the in order to do that, we need to get back into the uh, transformation, which as we mentioned earlier. We need to compute the HS. And if we have HS, we, if we have the dual conic of the conic which is we compute, we have the two lines L and M which is we have no. We know that we can recover the dual conic if we have the circular points, two circular points, we can recover the dual conic. We just, we just, we have just seen that in the previous slide. If I have this, we can easily compute because I have L and I have M. This is the given two lines. And then we can compute this part, which is also easy to compute. The same thing. Now we get an angle, which is mean if you give me two circular points, I can recover the dual conic. If I can recover the dual conic, I can recover the angle. And of course, if I can recover angle, I also can recover the length ratio. One thing which is we need to understand that in this case, two lines are orthogonal. We know two lines are orthogonal in the in the in the uh, in the projective in the Euclidean space if their dot product is. Two lines are orthogonal if their dot product equal to zero. Yes. Okay. Now, if we take uh, the same thing, if we take if two lines are orthogonal, we get that the the L M multiplied by the matrix if the dual conic will get zero because the the same thing we know that angles are preserved in the similarity. In the similarity, length and angles are preserved. 
OK, let us go into length ratio. If we link, uh, know length ratio, that's we know the, the length ratio from the sign, like the science theory. We know this holds for any triangle, for any three points. Now, if we know that this is holds, we know the angles. We can compute the angles. We pretty much can compute the the length ratio. This is this is we know. This we know, and this ratio we know. We know how to transfer this ratio into the projective domain and the opposite from the projective domain back into the similarity level. And again, this is in order just to for being able to get two circular points. Any question? OK. Now, if we want to get to the kind of the, the metric from an image, if we want to get the metric from an image, Specifying line in the infinity recover an image transformation. Transforming two circular, we get to the canonical line. So this is pretty much how we do the faint transformation. Now, if we try to get kind of more into this, we look into the dual conic, and we work out this simple kind of like it's, it looks like scary, but it's, let us, it's really not really it's simple. HS, the, this is the projective transformation. The projective transformation include the first one will be the symmetry, the similarity, sorry, the affine and the projective. This is how we actually subdivided the image into or decompose the matrix into three matrix. And this is the same in the right side. In the middle, we have the dual, con uh, the dual uh, conic. One thing, which is what we have done here, we take the S inside and the S inside and take only these two parts. And then actually transform this into this form. Nothing really special. And this is the general kind of projective or the general representation of this conic. Now, the same thing we can use if we have this transformation in hand, we can use, for example, subdivide it into kind of like matrices or three matrices, decompose it into three matrices. We, there is like no one algorithm to do the decomposition. We talk about this in the last lecture. One thing which is we can use the SVD to compose this into very specific like matrices, which is will be U, and then we have diagonal, semi-diagonal matrix, and then you have U transpose. And this is a pretty much this one. So this is, and this, and this is what we will get of the transformation, which is will be kind of like H in the middle. So this is what we will get. The H will be the U, which is this is the transformation we are looking for. And the middle one, we will know that this is will be kind of a new unit matrix. And the SVD could do this job really well-known algorithm. And you can apply it almost in any, any kind of a uh, math a library these days. So we can do the, the, if we have now the orthogonal lines, we can pretty much recover the image into similarity. So we have, if you give us two lines, which is our orthogonal, this is what we can compute from these two lines. We can use in order to compute the dual conic. If you give us the, the dual conic, the dual conic is powerful enough in order to do, to recover they all the transformation. And for to recover the dual conic, we only need two pairs of orthogonal lines. 
And if I, if we manage to do this kind of like very simple things, which is here we will have the dual conic how it's applied to the two lines. And this is the transformation of the, the dual conic. And pretty much this is the line L and this is the line M. What we know that this is, this should equal zero because exactly the equation on top. Now, if we know this is equal zero, now we can actually from this one, here we get from the first one, if we apply, if we assign V equal zero, we will get this in this equation, we will get this one. And now we take the lines, which is exactly instead of vector, write them like explicitly as L1, L2, L3. And this pretty much we know that M1, M2, these are given. Now what we will do, we will get this, the k, the requirement as k multiplied by k transpose, let us call it s. We know that it should, sup it should provide this, it should satisfy this equation. And we know that this is a matrix to a, uh, this is a matrix two by two, which is has a three independent variables and we know that they are symmetric, so pretty much we get two degrees of freedom. If we resolve this, we will be able to, or like pretty much, if we take this into like the values of k, k, this is the k, k, and this is the, actually af after taking this and kind of like explicitly, kind of like simplify it, we will get this part and this part equal to zero. Now, we know the only thing now we need to compute is k k11, k12, and k22. This is what we need to actually to compute. We will set one of them, assign a value, and then we will get the values of the two others. Or if someone give us three, two equation, we'll be able to recover. Is that clear? Now, if we know that these kind of like, we know that these orthogonal lines, the same thing we can use in order to do the similar, the same computation here. And what we will get, we, okay. What we will be able to do with this equation, the same one, we'll be able to do the rectification of the, this image back into this image, which is mean we recover in the entire metric of the image, which is, this is, note that this is the same equation we have earlier. We assigned V equal to zero. And then what we will get, go, go over all this simplification here. This is, we know, need, so this is equal zero, and this is what we compute the matrix C. This is, should be actually KK transpose, which is not really, should be here. Is that clear? Any question? So this is this case. We, we look into these equations and pretty much what we have realized that if you give us the point, we can work the mathematics quite easy and kind of like clear. Now, the issue which is it is not always that easy to do this computation kind of like directly because sometimes the correspondence are not that accurate or sometimes we have different kind of like variables which is are unknown. Sometimes it says we need to do this kind of not really more kind of an analytical manner. We will be kind of like forced to go into approximation. So this is pretty much now we will move from more theoretical to less theoretical but more practical part. So in the next lecture, which is will be now next week and the week after will be no lecture. And the lec the after that, what we will be will doing, will look into the uh, estimation of the projective 2D transformations.
and we will look into more algorithmic and more approach in order to do this computation. But right now, we look into the theory and the mathematical part, which is, it may be look a little bit complicated, but if you worked out like with a really paper and pencil and try kind of to resolve this, you will find that they are not really, they are not complicated. Just to give you a little bit like examples, here we end up actually having kind of like three variables, linear equation. All these will give us linear equation, e except for the conic and the do conic, we will get actually second degree. But pretty much we'll get all linear equation that we need to resolve and with like depends on the degree of freedom, we'll have the variable there. And we'll get like, even if we, we look at the computing the, um, the line at infinity from two vanishing points, it's pretty much cross product as we see, just kind of, it the terms look kind of more really sometimes a, uh, complicated, but they are not. All what we have seen so far, it's cross product of two vectors at 3D. And the, the maybe a little bit kind of like complicated is the conic representation. But if you look how we work out the conic representation from the previous lecture, it's pretty much simple because we look into all these conics and we see one unique representation. And some have less degrees of freedom. For example, circle will have much less degrees of freedom than ellipse or hyperbola or parabola. And the same thing, but all these are the same, the same matrix. So for circle, we have more zeros in the matrix than what we will have in ellipse or hyperbola. hyperbola. So this is the issue, which is, this is, and the pretty much what we will have as the dual of the conic, it's the inverse of the matrix. And, but we assume it's inverse that the same thing which, which is, will have the same rank. The, during the computing the inverse, the matrix does not lose of its rank, which is to be the same rank as before and after. So pretty much all these terms like maybe represent kind of like matrix representation, make it similar, but just compact. And if you look at this, it's just matrix and vertex and the like and the vector multiplication. It's not really, no, no more than this. And the concept is, is the, the things which is need to kind of to bear in mind is what a point infinity, what a line infinity, what the, the conic and the dual conic, the dual space of a point, the dual space of a line. And, and pretty much after that, all this kind of like working the kind of linear equation in simple mathematics, or simple algebra. And if any of you have a question, so please kind of like uh, drop by office and we can chat about these things. So pretty much I, I completed this like part. Next part I'll go into kind of in uh, an estimation of a projective transformation. Okay, so uh, Merry Christmas and see you uh, in two weeks or in the, uh, in the afternoon in the, uh, in the lab party. Okay.